go back and make a quick video about the other method I showed about how to solve um, these proportions when you're dealing with percents because I realized that the zoom recording uh, zoom wasn't recording um, so most of the time what we've done to solve problems is and you can see we did this with the shirt and the pants method is that we had these proportions right and at first uh, these were missing so I didn't have these numbers here and we had to figure out how do I get you know this the shirt and the pants were a 25% and a 30% discount so I had 25 over 100 and 30 over 100 for my percents and then the original price of the shirt was 44 so that's on the bottom um, the discount price for the pants was 15 so that was on the top and then you would think you look at these and you would think, well, how do I solve these? Well, I can solve these. I can solve these pretty easily um, because look, uh, 25 is just 100 divided by four, right? So I could do 44 divided by four, all in my head, and get 11. 11. That's the amount of the discount. And likewise, this one, right? I can look at this one and be like, oh, well, 15. 15 is just 30 divided by 2. So I can do 100 divided by 2. That's 50. And that's where I got 50 from right here. So sometimes they're super easy to do mentally. Now then came the shoes example. The shoes example was a 15% discount so I had 15 over 100 and I had $9 as the discount amount and we were trying to solve for uh, the um, original price, which is right here, Oops. which is 60. That's what was missing. And so when we looked at this pattern, right, because that originally wasn't there, you could think, remember, you could go back and forth between from fraction to fraction to find a rate, or you could go from the numerators to the denominators to find a rate. But both gave us this, if I did 100 divided by 15 to see how I'm going back and forth, um, it was 6.66666 repeating forever. Okay, um, So I could multiply to go down, so I could go this way. right? If it's divided by 6.66, that means I could multiply this way times 6.66666. Or likewise going back and forth this way, it was 1.6 repeating. And that, that gets a little bit messy because, you know, on a calculator, you can't actually put in six repeating forever. And, and so you either have to do um, round or you have to use fractions. We haven't really gotten to multiplying with fractions yet. So um, that's why I introduced you to this other way. This other way is called cross products. So with cross products, we are using the principle, and I'm going to use the same problem. So I'm just going to rewrite this over here. So this is 9 and 15 over 100. With cross products, we are using this mathematical concept that if you have two equivalent fractions, and I'll give some examples, let's say we have 1 half equals 5 tenths, we have 1 half equals four eighths and maybe even a third one just to solidify the idea um, what's in it um, let's say seven fourteenths a weirder one so what you can see here is that these are all a half these fractions are all equivalent to one half five is half a ten four is half a eight so on now there's this principle when you have two equivalent fractions, which is what we're trying to make here, right? We're trying to get two equivalent fractions. We don't have them. But when you do have two equiv equivalent fractions, if you take their cross products and you multiply them, they will equal the same thing. With it, in this case, one times 10 is 10, two times five is 10. These both, the cross products equal 10 or they you know they both equal 10 they both equal the same thing but in, in this case 2 times 4 is 8 1 times 8 is 8 right 1 times 14 is 
14. 2 times 7 is 14. So you can say, some people call this the butterfly method, some people call it cross multiplying. Um, it is, uh, some people don't like this because they don't really understand why this is working, but it can be really helpful. I'm going to show you how it works so we can use it and know how it works. So the, the concept is that the reason that this works is because the numbers across from each other, if the fractions are equivalent, should equal the same thing. So we come back over here and we're like, well, how does that help us? Okay, so what that means is that this nine times 100 should equal 15, we're trying to find this, should equal 15 times uh, whatever this is, 15 times x. So I'll write that out. So 9 times 100 equals 15 times x. Okay, well I can do 9 times 100, that's 900, and that will equal 15 times x, I'll just write 15x. Okay, so how do I figure out what number is, how do I figure out what x is, right? 15 times something is 900. Well, we could work backwards, right? Um, what's 900 divided by 15? Well, I can do that. I'll, I'll divide this by 15 to see what that is, right? And this is 60. 900 divided by 15 is 60. So that means that x has to be equal to 60. All right? And then that is what the answer is. Now, the nice thing about this pattern is you might feel like, well, this is great, but what, what happens if the part is missing? Or what happens if the... What happens if the percent is missing? And the nice thing about doing this method is that it doesn't matter which piece is missing. It doesn't matter whether your part, your whole, or your percent is missing, because ultimately, always what you're going to have to do is, to solve it, you'd have to multiply the two that you have, like we did, right? We multiplied the two that we had across diagonally from each other to see what those are, and then, to figure out what the other number is, you'd have to divide it by the one that's across from our missing value. So if we went up here to all these examples that we had previously, you know, how could you use that with these examples? If I didn't have, let's say I hadn't solved all this, right? None of this exists. I don't have this number. I don't have this yet. Let's say we, have, we, we just had these, I'll try and get rid of most of this. We, let's say we had just set all this up, right? Now these ones I would say you don't really need to use this method for because like we did before, you should be able to go like, oh, this is times five times five. Do it in your head, right? Divided it by three, divided by three. These are way easier to do mentally, but the, pretend the numbers weren't so easy to work with. So how do I get this missing number? Well, I know that these two numbers multiplied times each other, right, should equal these two numbers multiplied times each other. So I would have to do 300 times 60 first to figure out what that is, and then I would divide it by 100 to figure out what that number is. So over here, what do I do? I would look for the two that I have diagonally across, 300 times 100, and I would divide it by 60 to get this. In this case, the two I have diagonally across are 60 and 100. I would multiply those, 600 times 100, and I would divide it by this one, the one that's left, to get the missing value. So it doesn't really matter wh where it's missing, right? You're still just always multiplying the two that you have across diagonally and dividing it by the one that's left over by itself to find the missing value. And so that can be very helpful um, whenever you have some weird fractions, although still I encourage you to 
just look at it real quick and see if you can do it mentally first because it could save you quite a bit of 